You sang, I deserve all the glory. Now, examine your heart and will you give me all the glory that I am worthy of? Set your hearts, my people, and yield your all unto me. Yea, be committed to me all the way. For I died for you, I gave you life eternal. Let that follow the spirit of appreciation within your heart. Call out and show the reverence that I deserve, for I am the Holy One, yes. says the Lord. Salute, Kamaba, Salaka. <laughs> the whole of your being, the whole of what you have made, I have made you to be, says the Lord your God. For yea, said the Lord, my coming is soon. My coming is soon, says the Lord your God. You must have the fire of the Holy Ghost within you, says the Lord your God. You must open up your heart and your life to what I've offering to you this day, says the Lord your God. For yea, says the Lord, it is mighty, it is great, says the Lord your God. Yea, says the Lord, I require you to be as I am, says the Lord your God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, you do deserve all the glory. And Father, I know as we search our heart, we can see so much to which we should thank you for. Thank you, Father, that you've spoken to us. You're stirring up our spirit, Lord. Keep stirring us up, Father, that we will be a church on fire for you, full of love and grace, Lord, that we can extend your love and grace into the lives of others, Father, we ask. May we hear your voice today, Almighty Lord, that will cause that fire to burn. Fan the fire of our heart, Lord and God. This morning, Lord, that may there be, we, we really be set on fire, ready to go out into this city, a glowing, glowing for you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Or had there been healed? I wonder if there's anyone here today that's got a testimony to give in what God has done in their life in the last week or two. Praise God. Praise God. See, it's there. Hallelujah. There's so many things just happen. Just happen and, and uh, there's many more things and God said last week he's ready to take us up to a new level. A new level, but he said he's going to work on our hearts to get us prepared to go to that new level. And it's being prepared to go higher in Jesus. You can only go up a mountain as far as you're prepared to go. But the higher you go, the more, this, more vivid and the scenery becomes. And uh, that's what God's calling us now to come up to the top of the mountain. He said, if you'll come up to the top of the mountain, I will remove the clouds. If you'll come up to the mountain, I will remove the clouds. I can remember very, very clearly the Lord speaking to me. Come on, take the church up the mountain and I will remove the clouds. 
Now what is a cloud? You could have a cloud of, of uh, uh, financial difficulty, it could be uh, spiritual, it could be emotional, it could be psychological, it could be any physical, it could be anything that mountain, but God said if you're prepared to go up the mountain, that cloud, the clouds that are over us are going to be blown away. Now, if you want the clouds gone, let's go up the mountain in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's my aim and my goal, going up and up the mountain. We can see we're getting set up with looking at a little bit more like Christmas, but we're not here to celebrate the Christmas, we're here to celebrate the Christ. And that's where our focus will always be on the Christ. Because the Christ in us, he's the one that's the hope of all glory. There's no hope and glory in Christmas, but there is in the Christ in us. And I, I rejoice in that. And um, when I was laying in my bed and they put in the candle in this one and, and the, uh, and the uh, pathology was taking the blood out of this one and some other doctor was taking some more out down here somewhere. The three of them together, they're almost bumping one another, pulling it out here and I see all this blood coming out of me and I just looked at Jesus and, and I saw his blood. His blood. That's what it's all about. His blood. And I think and I often and I just thought immediately about his blood and I thought, now what can wash away my stain? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And it was the blood of Jesus that moved in my life some sixty odd years ago now and set me free. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. But then we've got to keep that blood flowing. The blood must keep flowing, keep flowing, keep flowing. What happens when the blood is not flowing? It congeals, it becomes a scab. And then it eventually turns to ash, and then you're gone. But if you want the life in Christ Jesus, you've got to have the blood continually flowing. And when the blood is flowing, it's cleansing. It's cleansing for each one of us. For it's the blood of Jesus Christ God's only begotten Son that cleanses you and me, each one of us, from all sin. And I know today, as we receive these emblems, the bread and the cup, we hold it in our hand. Imagine how powerful that little cup is that you're holding in your hand. You could be a very corrupt person. You might have the, so much finances that you can bribe judges and, and judiciary systems and try to get all your records removed. It's going to cost you a lot and still not succeed. But yet today, every record of your past, your sins of the past is removed in that cup. And it's free. It's free. It's free to the whosoevers of this world. All you need, to, all the whosoevers of this world need to do is come and receive. Come and receive of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just drink in of him. Drink in of him. Receive of him what is prepared for you. Today, this cup represents life. This cup represents life for each one of us. What is the life? As Moses said here, without blood there is no life, for the life is in the blood. Amen. If you are a new creation, you've got to be flowing with the blood of the new creation, not the old. The old creation will not keep going. It will pass away. But the blood will cleanse and be the power for each one of us all the way into eternity with him. Shall we stand in his presence? We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the glory.
How much of the glory have this morning have you already given him? How much? How much? Ask yourself. Come on. How faithful have you been to him since last Sunday till today? And how faithful has he been to you since last Sunday till today? Can you really hold the bread and the cup in your hand and say, Lord, I am thankful. I really do appreciate you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that, that you've done again, as you always do, the impossible for each one of us. And when Jesus, when he received the bread, he broke it. He broke the bread. And he said, this is my body. My body. Which is broken for you, each one of us today. I want you to eat all of it in remembrance of me. So Lord, as we eat this bread, and as we hear when our teeth crunch upon this broken bread, may we see the brokenness of you. And may we appreciate the agony that you went through that we should survive, Father, and, and remain and be healed, Father. So, Lord, we eat this bread today in obedience to you. In, Lord, in Jesus' name, eat ye all of it.